Hi everyone, Michael Rubenfeld here. I hope you're well. I have been struggling a bit to keep up with making videos. Um, and I wanted to make a video, but I wasn't sure what to make a video on because my head has been so involved in the new piece of theater that I'm making. And so I thought, well, Michael, it probably makes the most sense to talk about the piece of theater I've been making. Some of you might know that I'm a professional theater artist. It's what I've been doing my entire life. Uh, as well as being an actor, I'm also a, a playwright. Uh, sometimes I'm a director and sometimes I'm a, a producer of theater. And my latest project is a show called Schron Przeciwczasowe, or Time Shelter. And it's being uh, made for the Stade Teatr here in Krakow, Poland. The show is uh, directed by Marcin uh, Wierzchowski. It is uh, co-written with me. I would say that I'm also the dramaturg and I'm also performing in the show with members of the, uh, the, the Stade, uh, the Stade Teatr uh, company. Um, some wonderful actors, including Anna Dimna, who some of you might know of. Time Shelter, Schron uh, Przeciw Czasowe, is a very loose adaptation uh, I'm not even sure if you could call it an adaptation. It's more like a show inspired by the book uh, by the same title, A Time Shelter, by uh, Georgi Gospodinov. The book itself is about um, a, a man named Gaustin who opens a, a, a clinic for Alzheimer's patients. And in the clinic there are different floors and each floor is a reconstruction of a different period in history and the idea is that alzheimer's patients can live in this clinic in the historical period that makes the most sense for them to help trigger their long-term memory and allow them to live a fuller more uh, peaceful say life with Alzheimer's. This is all a, a, a work of fiction. And we um, used, with the, of course, permission of the writer and his management, um, the concept, the premise for, for our production of, of Time Shelter. In the book itself, the Time Shelter is opened in Zurich, in Switzerland. In the book, as a result of the opening of the uh, clinic uh, in Zurich, there are other clinics around the world that begin to open up. And what we decided for our production is to imagine that a clinic, a time shelter, a clinic for Alzheimer's patients has also opened up in Poland. And so what we've done is basically created a story a narrative uh, that exists within the context of our version of a time shelter. And it's, you know, an excellent book. It won the, Ma the Booker International Prize uh, in 2023, last year, the last uh, version. You know, and what's so wonderful about the book, and what I think we're really trying to do with our, our play, is to capture the essence of the book uh, and the, the questions that the book uh, asks, um, which is about memory and the past, and when um, memory and the and, and and the nostalgia that comes with um, moving into the past, um, and when I say moving into the past, of course, this is something that we do uh, frequently in our in our minds. The past and the nostalgia for the past is a really important tool for, for our existence, whether it's in a relationship itself, say, you know, the, the nostalgia of, of the, the kind of the formation of a relationship is very important. The first meeting, the first date, the, the place where you, you were proposed to, or the place that you proposed, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is all a kind of nostalgia uh, historical nostalgia, in many ways, that nostalgia is, is, a, is a kind of glue that holds together a, a relationship. And, and, and similarly, you know, it's also about uh, countries, nationhood, nationalism, patriotism. 
so much revolves around the nostalgia, the historical nostalgia in the context of a country, whatever that country may be. And in, in Poland, and Poland has its very own specific particular uh, nostalgia, uh, historical nostalgia, whether it's Piłsudski before the war, uh, the Solidarity Movement, uh, maybe, you know, this last election for some people. Um, the interwar period certainly is a very nostalgic period for me and the, the, the kind of Jewish life and existence that was operating here. All these things are so important uh, in terms of where we build our, our connections to, to, to things. And this is very much a kind of exploration that Gospodinov was making in his book. And his book uh, is, is, is fascinating because you know, the, the, the time shelter itself, it begins, in the book it begins as a place for Alzheimer's patients, but the seduction of being able to exist within the context of history um, becomes attractive enough that other people start to, 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 to join the time shelter. And ultimately, the European Union in the, in the book um, who are fearing that the the future of the European Union is 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 in danger, make the decision to um, hold referendums across Europe for each individual country to determine what period in history that country will go into. So instead of moving into the future, countries are moving forward into the past. It's kind of brain brain buster but it's a you know really beautiful book about memory and nostalgia when nostalgia is um, a beautiful positive thing when nostalgia is a a dangerous uh, thing uh, you know nostalgia is is used to promote versions of nationalism in 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 in, in ways um, that some might perceive as being uh, rather dangerous, uh, uh, you know. Certainly, the the the, the f former ruling government piece used Polish nostalgia, or uh, you know, and certainly like a, the promotion of a heroism narrative to promote a nationalism within the context of of of, of Poland. Um, and you know, I think about Israel, and Israel is is like a nostalgia factory. Um, it's, it's so much, it's, the narrative in Israel is so built on his, the nostalgia of the stories that we tell about historical Israel to the point that it's even hard to separate fact and, and fiction. This is, he, this is a major argument in, in Israel, you know, what's real or what's not. You know, who has the right to this land? Jews would say that they do because of the history in that country, um, Arabs, Palestinians would say that they do. Uh, it's hard to actually sort of land on, on, on the truth, but that's not what I want to talk about. That's not what the play is concretely about, but that is the world of, of the play that we're living in. We do have a, a clinic. Um, we have a time shelter clinic. And in the context of the clinic are three, are, are three narratives. Um, and you know, the work that I make with, with Marcin very often uses the family, the family structure, the microcosm of a family structure to try and tell a larger uh, story about, a larger systemic story about, uh, about Poland, really. And, and that's what this play, too, is, is about. So, you know, our three narratives um, take place in three different time periods. So they take place in... 1982, during the Solidarity period and the encroachment of martial law. 1968, when uh, Poland's uh, Jews were pushed out of, uh, of Poland and the political strife that was happening there. And then, of course, the period just before the war leading into the, the war. And the, the play, while it's not a play about uh, Polish politics. It very much uses uh, these time periods to have a conversation about uh, about the dangers and the beauties of of nostalgia. And at the heart of the, the the piece, the play is very much about lost love, and it looks at these sort of events in history or 
events that happened during events in history that resulted in, in, in losses of love, the losses of love for people, losses of love for Poland. And Poland now in the 21st century, uh, you know, however many years after World War II, after communism, is in this place where I think in a way love is, 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 being, is being found uh, again and held on to. Uh, and I say love um, in a kind of grandiose way, meaning that, you know, love for, for, for Poland, like real love for Poland. I think like during communism, there's a complicated love for Poland, but this kind of post-communist period uh, right now, I can really, you know, I feel like Poland is is falling in love with itself again. Polish people are are re falling in love with Poland during communism and right after communism. A lot of Polish people were leaving Poland. They're trying to get away from Poland, and there are a lot of people who might perceive Poland as as not an attractive place. But I think that you know Poland is becoming is like re becoming itself in in, in, in a way. Uh, in, a, in a way that's quite beautiful and profound uh, because it's suffered, you know, this is a country that's really suffered. A lot of people really suffered in Poland from, from different wars and, and occupations. And we have what might be perceived as, as, as freedom uh, right now. I think the most recent election was a really interesting moment in history, in Polish history, where I, some people might uh, argue that Poland's freedom was being threatened, and Poland said, no, no, we are going to maintain our freedom, and yet we're in a place in Europe surrounded by uh, the rise of a certain kind of, of government that's using uh, nostalgia, ideas of the past to promote, to promote the future, uh, and this is very much a tool for, for right-wing governments. Uh, not just right-wing governments, left-wing left governments as well. I don't think it's exclusive to any, any wing, but I think that there are times when there's the potential for, for a real danger. We might be better off uh, if, if, we, if things were only as they were in the past. Um, and this is very uh, often a propagandist promotional tool for encouraging a certain kind of uh, um, na narrowness of, 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 of freedoms because the narrowness, the narrowing of freedoms also, uh, also somehow gives a sense of, of, of security, the kind of security you might have had in the past. Of course, Poland, you know, fought for, for freedom during the Solidarity Movement and Solidarity was not that long ago. I can really feel that Poland will, will, you know, is refusing to, to give that up. And it's just a real uh, privilege to be a part of, of, uh, of this, this theater for this period. Uh, we open on uh, March the 1st at the Kamarana stage on Starowiczna here in Kraków. And we'll be running in repertory for, I suppose, as long as people want to see it. So, Chumaj And I hope that you can make it to see schron przeciw czasowe and let me know if you have any questions in the comments because I would be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot. Love you all and uh, hope to see you at the theater.